right. So, oh, turntable here. Put that there. All right, so. Break the pot. <laughs> All right, so kind of determined that this is going to be the front so far, anyway. Now, see the person, whoever had this before me, this is a very dense, I'm surprised it hasn't rotted because it's a very dense, very heavy soil. It doesn't look like it even has any pumice in it. Yeah, it's very little. So, yeah. Save that, you can use it again. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I'll just mix it in with my mix that I use. And See, if I was at home, I'd take a water hose to this and wash all this off. You could use our sink. Yeah, yeah, they'd love that. Okay, so. Now. There. All right, so here's what makes me different. I do... A lot of people will say, you know, what kind of programs you do. Sorry, I can't make it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ask me, you know, what kind of programs you do and that kind of thing. I said, oh, I do one on staging. And she goes, well, everybody does something on staging. And I say, nothing like I do. <laughs> okay, so I, a lot of people would take this plant and put it into a pot that was similar in size that it came out of. That's what you're told to do. And that's what everybody... Like you said, but I don't do that. So, I'm cutting off all these roots that go down. So are there any of the roots that you should not to cut when you do something that drastic? Well, it depends. Um, in theory, you shouldn't cut a taproot, but that hasn't stopped me. <laughs> um, you shouldn't... Because um, where's one? I don't think there's one here. Yeah, no, I... The avonia. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah the avonia I did, because that little pot that it's in was a little bit too shallow, so I cut off about a half inch off the bottom of the codex. So, okay. So there's that. So here's the pot I'm gonna put it in. So I gotta go a little more. Okay, so I. Everybody's really quiet. You can hear the plants screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I will protect this now for a couple of weeks till these wounds heal. Yes. So in general, whenever you cut something like this, yes. for every diameter of width, you let it dry a week. So it should dry at least a, at least a week, probably. Yeah more. My soil mix is very dry, so that will be all that I'll need to do. So that when you say let it dry, does that mean just air dry or is it actually in dirt? I do it. I just pot it up and let it. I just don't water it for a couple of weeks. Are you going to have to trim out the top foliage, Jenny, to, uh, because of the root loss? Eh, you don't have to. You could, but it won't. I might, I'll shape it up once it gets a little more established, but I won't. Alright, 
So then when you're staging it, that's the trunk straight up and down like that. What you want to do, what I'm going to do is stage it so the trunk is at an angle. Give it some, some visual interest besides being in a shallow pot. And then you don't want it in the center of the pot. Usually in the back, the back corner usually is, is good. It could actually go a little shallower, but let's see. It's that mass right there. And as far as screening, you could use, you know, this is bonsai tree mesh. You could use window screen, newspaper, just something to cover the drain holes. Oh, it's so quiet. And then you're gonna, then you're gonna tie that in, are you? Well, probably should, because it won't stay in by the time I get home. I put lots of drainage in my pots, uh -huh. so especially shallow pots. Yeah. You'd think a shallow pot would drain better than a tall pot, but it's the opposite. Oh, tall pots sure. drain like this pot will drain much better than this pot. Uh -huh. That's why there's so many holes. Yeah. So this is bonsai wire. Do you get that stuff online? Amazon. Oh, I'm just going to get that. Yeah, so since we're here in the room, so I need something to tie the wire to that's on the bottom of the pot and I don't have anything here. So I'm using a heavier wire for that. Kate, why do you use bonsai wire as opposed to just, you know, whatever you see at the group, at the, at the Ace hardware? Uh, it's more flexible. Because if you get copper or steel wire, mm -hmm. something's going to give and it's not going to be the wire. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the plant. Mm -hmm. So this will easily conform around the root or whatever you're tying yeah, does around. Does this not rust and disintegrate maybe? It's aluminum. Alu this, is, this is aluminum. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it won't, it won't do any of that. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to go up through the drain hole. That. And you put the... Mesh over the wire. That's the drain that you mesh the then put that. Kind of wrapping it around, keep it somewhat in there, so it's going to go about like that. And then there's my potting soil here. Soil. Yep, this is the old soil, red pumice, or not red pumice, red lava, some old pumice, some old top dressing. Uh, no, it's very, it's gonna, it won't hold together. And that's what I do when I mix this stuff. I do want it to just kind of fall apart. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, rocks. A lot of times when you see people use rocks, is they set them on the surface of the, the topsoil or top grab, top dressing. And what I like to do is what's called the iceberg effect. You want that much, you want a good portion of the rock buried in the soil. So it kind of looks like it's supposed to be there instead of an afterthought. Ah, eh, just put that on there. Right, so position there a little bit, put that there. Somebody bring a broom. <laughs> Alright, good. Our president cleans up after me. Oh, okay, good. What president? This one will do something like that. Is that plant blooming? What's that? Is that plant blooming? It's in bloom now, yeah. And if it was, I don't know if you could smell it, but if you come up here later and smell it, it's not the greatest smell. <laughs> it's going to smell more like a dying plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to smell like death. That's what it's going to smell like. Also, I like to group the rocks in, in odd numbers. I'm going to shape it. I probably won't do that now, but I will shape the, the top because it's there's too much foliage for the amount of pot that's here. Pot and everything else. Yeah, it looks like it has some interesting uh, internal structure. On the yeah, that's area. what I want to thin it out to expose some of that. And so I'm going to, my plan is to take this to San Diego in February and get on the trophy table. <laughs> so. I will shape it up to expose a lot of that structure. All right, so then, where's my top dressing? All right, so top dressing, I, I uh, not really mix. I get my, I make my own, not make. I sift it, I buy path gravel, and then sift it into the sizes I need. So, and then I put it, I put it all back together. I mix it all back together when I, I put it back in here. So what I do is, this is half inch fur. I sift it, so I got uh, eighth, let's see, sixteenth, eighth, and then three eighths to half inch. So I put the, the big stuff in first. And we'll just kind of smooth that around. Hey, yep. Uh, Years ago, Sacramento did a trip down to the uh, LA area for mm -hmm. one of the big shows. Yep. Have you? Was that a real hassle for you to get that all organized, or would you think of doing something like that again? Oh yeah, well, I, 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 I enjoyed it. I think we had a good time. I loved it. So, what are you going to do the next one? <laughs> well, <laughs> when are we going to do the next? Yeah, when are we going to do the next one? Well, I've always talked about doing an Arizona trip. But, you know, that's kind of, 
I'm just trying to get everybody on the same page, which is a pain in the ass to do. Would we drive? Or yeah. would we, we would drive to be able to take stuff back. I would, yeah. Well, yeah, you'd take a charter bus and then yeah. you limit the occupants so you got room to bring stuff back. Yeah. Well, let us know. <laughs> yeah. All right, so then that's that. Put that in first. And then uh, the next size. And then I forgot my brush, so I can't make it all. Uh -huh. It'd be fun to take the train to LA. Oh. Yeah, how would we bring France back, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got it. Yeah, you got to have room to bring stuff back. Because you're down there, that's the epicenter for all these plants. So if you're going to make that trip, you have to. Allow for <laughs> you got to allow for contraband to come back. <laughs> the rock that you're doing now, the little moat around the roof, is that for the roof, or is that just a design? Thing? It's just a decoration. It's just for decoration, just to make it look halfway decent. Alright, so that's the basic idea. Wow. Wow. So, is that a isn't, that, isn't that grow naturally in California? Yeah, Baja, Southern California. Mm. Um, okay. Any questions about that so far? Did you dig that one up? <laughs> this, yeah. It was at one time. I think the, the person I got it from had got it from somebody that dug it up. So, where's my spring? Oh, Pete, how long have you had this plant? Uh, about six months. And how come you haven't? <clears throat> you just let it grow wild right now? You didn't well, because a lot of times when I go out and hunt these plants down, I know what I'm going to do, and I know a lot of people want to see what I do, so I save them for things like this. So like this one I'm doing here, when I do Bakersfield next week, I have a pelargonium I'm gonna chop up there. Um, I have a pachypodium that I'll do during the summer. You know, so I, I have that kind of in my head when I, when I mm -hmm. obtain these plants. Because I know it's, everybody's gonna wanna see, you know, because you know, just the way I do it is so different than everybody else. Don't you have a website? Yeah, I have an Instagram page, I have yeah. a Facebook page, I have all that. And I, I take pictures of everything and I post everything. It'd be nice to see that one when you yeah, when yeah. finished. Yeah. Cleaned up. Okay, so if I was gonna prune this now, so let's let's just do now which one? So I wanna keep this one. So a lot of times what I do when I'm going to prune is I have, a, this is just water and vinegar, uh, maybe a tablespoon or two to this container. And what I do is I cut off, like I do this on anything with a milky sap, whether it's this, Fokia, there's a couple others, is you cut and then spray. And so what that does is it doesn't leave that sappy residue on the, on the trunk or the codex. <laughs> Uh, can't hurt you. <laughs> uh, it, it acidifies the water. And so, because the water's going to run down into the plant, so you might as well, you know, make it halfway useful for the plant. So that, that would be what I would do. So I'm going to go through, like I'm going to leave this, this big yes. branch here. I'll thin out all, a lot of these small ones. And I'll do it little by little. I'm not just going to go chopping. And then one of the things that... I like to do is when you prune, don't prune flat. Mm -hmm. Prune at an angle and away from the viewer's position. So the viewer is looking at it this way, you want to angle it back. So you cut at an angle backward. So you would cut and then wherever the, the node is for the leaf, is that's where you're going to cut at a backward angle behind that leaf. So that way it's not seen. Because if you come up here and look at this now, you can see all these, all these cuts that were made, 
And so what I'm going to go do eventually is, because I want to bring this down probably about four inches, and then make the growth go that way. So kind of bring this out more this way, shorten this side over here, and kind of balance it out more with, with the container. And the container could actually be a little bit wider, but this was uh, all I had at the time. It already looks like it's seated well in there. Well, we'll find out by the time I get home. Yeah. <laughs> um, any questions? Euphorbia miserable?